Hello everybody, this is Ryan over at High Carb Generator. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to review this video that I saw. I don't know if this is an old video, new video. I have no idea, but I saw the title, The Bitter Truth About Sugar and How It Causes <laughs> Diseases by Dr. Robert Lustig. Isn't that the guy that I reviewed a little while ago that tells you to have a liter of, of oil, olive oil a day? Or am I thinking of the wrong person? Let's see. Oops. Wrong thing. Let's see. This is a bigger decline in blood pressure than salt restriction does. Sugar's a bad guy in the store. Full stop. So what, Robert, is wrong <laughs> this with guy. our diet? Look how <laughs> bad this guy looks. <laughs> Look how bad this dude looks. This dude is from Cleveland Clinic, right? I'm sure we'll see him again. Let's let's go back. Let's go back. Let's review. Man, he's just down there. They try not to show this dude. Where is he? I can't even get him. There. Oh my! He looks terrible. This dude. <clears throat> let's just get started. Is wrong with <laughs> our diet. <laughs> Number one, what everyone thinks is wrong with our diet is not even remotely what's wrong with our diet. Of course. Um. You know, every country that has adopted the Western diet is now sick. And that goes around the world. Let's see what and happens there are here. countries that are actually more diabetic than we are, and they're not even fat. Like, for instance, yeah. Pakistan and China. Now, they think, well, they're not fat, so there's nothing. What happened there? Fat was added. Wrong with their diet. Olive oil. Because after all, it's the Western diet just causes obesity. No. Mm. Obesity is just a marker for the problem. It's not the problem itself. And who knows? This guy could be promoting sugar, and that could be wrong. In fact, 20% yeah. of obese people are metabolically healthy. They will live a normal life, die at a normal age, not cost the taxpayer a dime. We have a name for these patients, MHO, metabolically healthy obese. They will outlive you and me. Okay, They're just fat. They have increased subcutaneous fat. Well, that subcutaneous fat is protective. Not yes, it is. And all inflammation gets stored there, so your blood your, your blood system is good. Most of those patients don't, or people, <laughs> patients, people don't really get the cancer and all that kind of stuff because it has a place to store all the toxins. Detrimental. Okay? Yeah. That's a good thing to have, not a bad thing to have. Yes, some people have more than others. On the other hand... Yeah. There are plenty of thin people who are sick. And the reason they're yeah. sick is because they have <clears throat> fat where they didn't know they had fat. Visceral. Like, for instance, <clears throat> the viscera in, you know, in terms of waist circumference. Yeah, organ and, fat. Or, and mostly impo most importantly, liver fat. And we've identified yeah. the liver as being the, you know, sort of sentinel problem. It's kind of easy to tell when you've got uh, fatty liver. Your gut will stick out like right below your chest you can see it on people of this entire thing liver fat i was just at the obesity medicine association meeting just this past weekend explaining why fatty liver is basically where the problem is so the question is why is it that we had never heard of fatty liver disease before 1980 and now 45 percent of adults and 25 percent of children not obese adults not GMO. Obese children, all adults, all children now have a disease that didn't even exist 50 years ago. Yeah. I mean, so, except for alcoholics, they'd get fatty liver, right? And that's the point. Only alcoholics had this. And now mm -hmm. everyone has this. And children don't. Preservatives. Drink alcohol. But children consume something that is just like alcohol. And that is sugar. No, sugar's so bad for you. Sugar and alcohol are virtually identical as far as the liver's concerned. That, wow. Wow. I mean. The big difference between sugar and alcohol is that for alcohol, the yeast does the first step of metabolism, which we call mm. glycolysis, anaerobic glycolysis. For Sugar for fructose, the sweet molecule sugar, we do our own first step of metabolism. But after mm -hmm. that, they're exactly the same. And so yeah. it makes sense that children would get the diseases of alcohol without alcohol. So until we fix this problem, and by the way, this is just... Didn't we start removing all sugar from everything? 
and then it's getting worse? Didn't we start adding fat to things? Protein? Protein? One of several problems with the Western diet. Until we fix yeah. this problem, nothing else is going to work. And I actually proved this in our own clinic here at UCSF. Yeah. Paid for by the meat industry. Because what we did was we took 43 children from our clinic who had metabolic syndrome. So this was, this was in the this was in the the movie Fed Up, right? This this no, we had what we had not gotten the results on this study back ah. when Fed Up was recorded. This is actually newer. Um, so it, no, it's mm. not in there. So there was something like that in the in the study where you put the kids in a metabolic ward and you fed them different diets and you saw what happened very quickly, right? Right, right. Well, this so ten days, ten days. What we did was we figured out what they were consuming on their home diet. Okay, we studied them on their home diet. Then for the next nine days, we catered their meals. No added sugar. So we took mm. the percent of calories from sugar from 28%, which is a lot, Oof. down to 10%. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you do 10 that. 10% is still a lot. <laughs> well, says the guy that looks like a skeleton. I mean, look at this dude. <laughs> look at this. People complain about how bad McDougal looks. This guy looks like he's got two and a half feet in the grave. <laughs> we, that was that was when we gave him fruit. So we gave yeah. him fruit. That was the pretty much the only sweet thing we gave them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you do that, you're going to take 350 to 400 calories a day out of kids' diets. And if you do that, number one, they're going to be hungry. And number two, um, they're um, going to lose weight. We didn't want them to lose weight because, hey, if they lost weight and they got better, people say, well, of course they got better. They lost weight. We didn't want them to lose weight. We actually wanted them to gain weight. So ah, we had. That makes sense to substitute the sugar for, with something else that was equicaloric. We gave them refined starch. So in the vernacular, we took the pastries out, we put the bagels in. We took the... Exact... Oh my gosh, he's proving... These people... How do you go to school for 200 years and still come out this mentally challenged? Pastries, donuts, Twinkies are not filled with sugar. They have sugar in them. The, the bulk of the caloric density is fat. It's called the Randall cycle. These people just don't understand it. Sweeten yogurt out. We put the baked potato chips in. We took the mm. chicken teriyaki out. We put the turkey hot dogs in. Okay, so we didn't give them good food. We gave them crappy food. We gave them processed food. We gave them Safeway food. We gave yeah, them yeah, kid yeah. food. <laughs> food kids would eat, okay? Yeah. But it was no added sugar food. And we also yeah. gave them a scale. And every day we'd call them up on the phone, what's your way? And if they were losing weight, eat more in order to keep their weight constant through the 10 days. And then we yeah. studied them 10 days later. And lo and behold, he literally, no. he literally just proved that sugar makes you skinnier. He just, he himself right here just proved that because they had to make them eat even more because they removed the fatty pastries from their diet and they gave them starch <laughs> and they couldn't keep the weight on. No change in weight. But the fat in their liver went down 22%. Because you removed some of the fat. Wow. Their conversion of sugar to fat went down 46%. Their triglycerides went down 49%. Did he say conversion of fat to sugar? <laughs> Wouldn't, that prove <laughs> Wouldn't that prove that you need sugar more if, if the body's converting fat into sugar? just 10 days their visceral mm. fat the belly fat went down seven percent and most importantly their insulin in their pancreas started being released and working properly yeah because you're not in the randall cycle anymore in other words we reversed their metabolic syndrome with no change just I, i'm an 80s kid anybody who watches my channel knows that i like to tout that because the 80s was the best generation ever on this planet don't care what anybody says it has been trash sense and 
one the the choices of snacks we had now i was even the fat kid and i was like maybe five to eight pounds overweight and that was considered the fat kid back in the day um you know when i went to the doctor they're like well you should it was like 10 pounds and i'm like you know what bro i'm doing everything i can i thought right our snacks back in the day were an apple a pear depending on the season a banana uh, watermelon, um, what was it, what are they called? Kudos or something? They were these like little uh, granola bars. Um, that was it. If you were hungry, that was your snack. If 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 you weren't able, if you didn't want to eat that snack, you weren't hungry, con- uh, according to your mother. So now the snacks are fat laden garbage with preser- preservatives in it change in calories and no change in weight and what this told us was because they were force feeding them that it's not the weight it's not the fat it's it's the randall cycle the liver insulin resistance for fat and that's the fat you can't see that's the fat you can't measure when you stand on a scale i'll agree there that's why we have metabolically healthy obese people who don't have liver fat yeah if you don't have visceral fat I mean, technically, you're healthy, but it, you know, you have to get a DEXA scan. I don't even know if that tests visceral or not. So, subcutaneous is the fat that's under this, basically between the muscle wall and your skin. That's subcutaneous. Visceral is anything that's surrounding your organs or anything <laughs> under the muscle. And we have very thin, sick people who do. In my understanding, you know, and this is, David Ludwig says this, you know, below the neck, your body can't tell the difference between, you know. uh... So this guy's just a fan. I mean, I guess McDougal is too. I I really, you know what? He's a Cleveland Clinic person. I live in Cleveland. I go to Cleveland Clinic. Cleveland Clinic was well-funded by a certain John D. Rockefeller who had a need to get rid of polychemicals. And so he created basically the AMA. I'm not going to go into any more than that. Ironically, John D. Rockefeller is buried about five miles from Cleveland Clinic in a cemetery called Lakeview Cemetery. Um, so I think he's still watching. Uh, Corn flakes and a, a soda, right? Or between a bowl of That's sugar and true. a bagel. That's and and I think, uh, you know, refined starches are also a problem. So I, what yes. I don't want people to take away from this is that you can eat refined starches and that's no. okay just define that i think yeah, it's still me, a problem let me let me let me uh, uh you know delve into that a little bit let me unpack that okay sugar dietary sugar the sweet stuff you put in your coffee you know the crystals is two molecules in one okay it's called sucrose but it is two molecules one is called glucose one is called fructose <clears throat> Now, glucose is the energy of life. Every cell on the planet burns glucose for energy. Glucose is so important that if you don't consume it, your body makes it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Makes it out of proteins. It makes it out of fats. So you will always have a serum glucose level. The Inuit, who basically didn't have any carbohydrate because they didn't have any fields to grow any carbohydrate. They ate whale blubber. They still had a serum glucose level. McDougal has proven so many times that the hunter, hunter, hunter gatherers were largely vegan. I'm going to pop a video in here of that. Because they had this particular habit of eating charred wood and bone ash. Come on. The reason they had strong bones is because they ate a diet of barley. Now, I went looking for fat gladiators. And the best I could do is the mosaics that were done back in those times. And I didn't find any, well, this guy's a little big, but that's probably mostly muscle. I couldn't find any fat gladiators. So when you have a friend or a relative who goes to the gym and pumps all these big weights and talks about how he or she has to be strong and eat lots of protein, eat whey powders and soy powders and so on, you tell them. That's not what the barley men did. I mean, the barley men, the strongest men in historical record, the gladiators, they didn't eat those things. Our Roman soldiers, they would ask their, uh, their commanders if they would withhold the meat before they went into battle because they knew that it made a difference as far as winning or losing the battle. 
if they could continue on their starch-based diet. Greatest conquests in the world that have ever occurred were accomplished by primarily men who lived on starch-based diets. For example, Alexander the Great conquered the, the known world of his time. And the soldiers were fueled by corn. They called it corn. But corn, corn wasn't maize. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about uh, wheat and barley and rye. That's what they ate. And Genghis Khan did the same thing. Conquered the known world, and his men were fueled by starch. And its relationship to teeth and bones and chemicals and genes and so on. Your conclusion is the human being is a... Starchivore. <laughs> and here we are back. Because yeah. glucose is that important. But it's not mm -hmm. important to eat because you can make it. Now, fructose, that sweet molecule in sugar, is a different animal entirely. Okay, there is no biochemical reaction in any vertebrate that requires dietary fructose. It is completely the mm -hmm. same. Um, how many animals eat fruit? How, I mean, how many animals do you see that eat fruit? We're tropical beings. Fructose is in fruit all animal life now it just yeah. so happens it's sweet it just so happens we like it a lot it just so happens it's addictive so is breathing but it is actually metabolized like fat mm. but it is completely mm. unnecessary now glucose will stimulate insulin release and that's not good because insulin release will drive energy into fat cells and increase weight gain. And that's what yeah. Dave Ludwig is talking about. And yeah. he's right. And he's right. I'm not saying he's wrong. He's right. But fructose, because it gets stuck in the liver and causes liver, that yeah. liver fat, you get insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So two different phenomena, two different things. One's called insulin secretion, insulin release. The other one's called insulin resistance. They are not the same. Insulin release will cause weight gain. Insulin resistance will cause heart disease, diabetes, diabetes, Alzheimer's, uh, cancer. I love how they're changing what they're saying. Uh, whatever. I, I, this part is just so ridiculous. Cancer and virtually all of the other chronic metabolic diseases that are chewing through our entire healthcare system. Mm -hmm. Insulin resistance is the bad guy. Insulin yeah. secretion is basically what we're talking about. When we have a pancreas for a reason. They act like we're not supposed to have this pancreas. They act like insulin is not supposed to spike. It, this is just, it's, it's, it's scary how much of this message is getting out there because it's just gonna make things worse and worse and worse and worse. And people are going, you know, this, the, the only thing that this really does is help the hospitals out because people are going to be on these high protein, high fat diets. The kidneys can't handle it. The liver can't handle it. I'm proof of that. I, I went through all of that. And then you, you have a patient for life because they don't research outside of that. They just want a pill or you to cut them open and do something. And so they can go back to their old habits. It's ridiculous when we're talking about the scale. You know, if I talked about how good keto was on this channel, uh, which it isn't, um, I would have 8 million subscribers. It's you know, it, you, you know, you put enough effort into that. You, you, you get huge on any platform. Insulin resistance Literally. is what we're talking about in the doctor's office. But eventually though, if you have enough of the restoring starches, even if you don't have refined sugars, you will see an increase in insulin resistance because you have to use more and more insulin and the cells become resistant. So it's sort of related, but I, I, I get your point. Fructose really has a, a unique effect on the body. We had Richard Johnson on the podcast who talked a lot about the dangers of fructose. And, uh, and David Perlmutter talked about this, uh, what he called drop acid, meaning uric acid right. in this role. And, right. and, and, uh, uric acid only comes from animal products. It, as uh, a real accelerator of insulin resistance and, true. and, and uh, chronic illness. So, your, uric acid literally is only it's urine acid the last time i checked the banana from the tree doesn't pee 
other bananas pee. The banana that comes from the tree doesn't have urine in it. I, Unless maybe a monkey pisses on it. I, I agree with you, Robert. I think, you know, it's so amazing to me that the single biggest driver of our exorbitant health care costs, of our declining health globally, of all of our chronic diseases, heart disease. What has happened since 1980? Seeing how I've been here the entire time. Uh, we've watched it, those of us who've been born that whole, you know, throughout this whole time. The advent of all of the snack food, the advent of high fat, high sugar stuff. Of course, sugar is going to get the blame, though, because the fat. It, it, we've watched this happen. Back in the day, uh, people consumed a lot of, you know, if you go to Asia prior to 1980, they lived on 90% white rice with a little bit of vegetable and maybe a little bit of meat here and there. No diseases whatsoever. China study proved this. Now you add the Western diet, which is a lot of heavy milks, heavy creams, ice creams, a lot of meat. I mean, if you go to China, they brag about how much, how many meats they eat in a day. And all of a sudden, these diseases just start popping out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. No one can figure it out. They didn't have diseases prior to this. But all of a sudden, you add this stuff, and they're like, oh, diseases come from? Where did they come from? I can't figure it out. It's got to be the rice. It's got to be the rice. It's the only thing it could be. We've eaten this rice for 5,000 years, no issues. But 1980 hits, and it's the rice. Doesn't make any sense. Disease, cancer, diabetes, dementia, even depression, uh, and more are driven by insulin resistance, and yet it's something... Yet they didn't have insulin resistance when they only ate carbs. Who knew? We learn almost nothing about in medical school. My daughter now is the second year medical school. I think she had like a... Oh, great. Here we go with another one. An hour on it, and and, and it wasn't really in the context of what's really driving mm -hmm. it, and and it, it's like if, if you treat that, you treat so many of these chronic illnesses. And it's one of the drivers Absolutely. of all aging. I just finished my book on longevity called Young Forever. And it basically. Young Forever. If you put this guy in homeless clothes on a street, he would look like a crackhead. <laughs> Young Forever. What is this guy talking about? Now, I know people say that about McDougal and I can't dispute it, but. He's got these huge bags under his eyes. I mean, he, there's not in this shot right here. There's not even a glint in his eye. It's like not even wet. It's like if you look at the science of this, the science of insulin resistance is really the science of chronic disease and the science of aging. And the there you go, the hospital. Somebody on keto. Science of death. Couldn't agree more. In fact, insulin resistance is the sentinel problem in all of these chronic metabolic diseases. I agree there. But you're going around about it the wrong way. You're being paid by the wrong industry. Because insulin resistance is a manifestation of mitochondrial dis. I am a product of listening to these people. I, I actually didn't listen to these people back in 99 when I first went on uh, the keto. Uh, they were telling me not to do it. It would be terrible for me and I would have all kinds of problems. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm 20. Whatever, I'm not listening to you, brah. And uh, sure enough, you know, it did take 10 years. And that's the thing. When people, when it takes 10 years for things to start hitting, like all these diseases, they don't really think, oh, it's got to be my diet. They think, oh, I'll get a pill. No. Cut me open, people. Take something out. And that's what they do. It's ridiculous. It's hard to watch. It's function. Mitochondria. Mm -hmm are the mm -hmm. little energy-burning factories inside each of our cells. I got to 405 pounds, by the way, listening to people like this. <laughs> 405 pounds. I think I'm like 255 now or something. So I've lost some weight. So I know what I'm talking about, people. And when our mitochondria work efficiently, we are healthy and our blood glucoses do not vary very much and our weight stays stable and we feel good and we can sleep well and all is people on keto cannot sleep well i was there i was an insomniac i probably still have insomnia from the damn thing because i didn't really have it that bad prior to i've been sleeping good lately though i'll say that i probably shouldn't say that it's been terrible lately terrible I haven't been able to sleep in years is right with the world and as soon as our mitochondria 
don't work well, all hell breaks loose. And we get yeah. all of these chronic diseases. Add some oil. Diabetes. And we feel like crap, et cetera, et cetera. And we end up starting to having to take medicines in order to try to make our mitochondria work better. And that's what happens because the doctors don't have a clue what they're talking about except guess what we don't have a medicine to make our mitochondria work better uh oh it's called sugar because no, no medicine can actually get to where the problem is okay but it's mm, you don't need a medicine for that so, foodable not druggable right <laughs> right so that's so that's the whole point is how i i do commend them on not giving out drugs because that that is a huge, huge problem. What's wrong with the mitochondria, and how do you fix it? That it needs sugar. It runs on sugar. That's what it runs on, glucose. That's yeah. basically what this whole story is about. And to be honest with you, Mark, that's what functional medicine is about. Okay. Yeah, whether for sure. whether for sure. whether they taught you that sure. or not, that's for where sure. we are. No, okay? it's for it's sure. The friggin' mitochondria. All right. So Absolutely. What, so what's poisoning them? That's the, the the big question in all of medicine. And be, well, before know, before we get into the the, the I want to get deep into mitochondria and all this. But before I just want to kind of back up a little bit because we all, we said a lot of stuff and I want to make sure people get it. So so. I want to talk about how we diagnose insulin resistance and, and, and you have in your book a way to self-diagnose because it's really yeah. important because your doctors are missing 90% of it. They don't. Okay. I agree there. And I think I'm going to stop there. Like always, I'm going to put the video link down below. Um, this wasn't as much of a hate video as it sounds. This isn't as much of a hate video as it sounds. It It's just irritating to watch because i've been there i struggled with the weight i mean you know my ex sandy she, i mean she watched it. it it's it's you know she watched me listening to these people and you know you, you gotta you gotta go in your own road at some point and i it, this you know and it, it just a lot of people go the wrong road and i'm just i make these videos because it is it really is just, if money were no object, I wonder what the medical industry would actually look like. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, if you liked the video, like, subscribe, comments, questions down below, and I'll talk to you in the next video.